All right, so now that I've got my plug surface released with wax, it's time for me to mix up some gel coat. <clears throat> oh, again, this is the gel coat I'm gonna be using. It's tooling gel coat, orange. And you wanna make sure with polyester gel coat, you shake it really well. I've already shaken this quite a bit. But sometimes some of the solids will settle at the bottom and there's different, chem different chemicals in there that needs to be mixed evenly together for the gel coat to work properly. Should be good by this point. Okay, just open this up. Turn the scale on. Except for grams. Unfortunately, the scale only goes to the nearest gram. I prefer if it went to tenths of a gram, but I should be able to make it with, with this. Uh, I'm estimating I'm going to need about 100 grams for this first coat of gel coat, um, and I'll also make my math easy when it's time to mix in the initiator. So I'm going to get as close to 100 grams as I can without going too crazy. So 102, that's fine. Just wipe off the excess off the can. Put this back up. All right, now I want to initiate this gel coat at about two percent. Uh, to 2.5%. So by the time I'm done adding my MEKP hardener or initiator into this gel coat, I want this to read 104 to 105. That'd probably be the ideal. Okay. Should be good enough. Hopefully, this will be the perfect amount of gel coat for this first coat. Alright, so I wish I had a bigger. Uh, tongue depressor or popsicle stick, but this should work fine for this. I'm gonna make sure that you mix the gel coat with the initiator really well. Scraping the sides and the bottom of the container. Now, if it was hotter in the environment that you're mixing this in and working with it in, then you'd want to add less initiator. If it was colder, then you might want to add a little bit more. The heat has a big effect on how fast the cure will happen and how long your pot life is for the gel coat. And the same goes for your resin as well. If you stir for about a minute, it should be sufficient. So definitely scrape the sides of the container. Make sure it's all mixed in well. Happy with that. Just the side. Now I'm going to start spraying the gel coat on the release plug surface. You want it to be relatively thick, but you don't want it to be so thick that it's sagging or running. Make sure your tool surface or your plug surface is dust free or contaminant free before you start spreading the gel coat on because you don't want any 
foreign objects or debris to be <coughs> in the gel coat surface of your final mold. Sorry, this is going to be a perfect amount. Now we will be doing another application of gel coat after this first coat uh, hardens up just a little bit. And the second coat will be to fill in all the low spots that the bristles left. You can kind of see all these dark spots, those are all thin spots in the gel coat. When this first coat hardens a little bit, um, you still want to be tacky, but uh, not um, moving around when you touch it or sticking to your finger if you touch it. That way, you can spread the second coat of gel coat on without disturbing the first coat. Add a little bit more since I've got a little bit more left in my cup. <clears throat> um, your professionals, they will use a what's called a milli gauge to measure the thickness of their gel coat. Uh, especially if they're spraying it on with a, they call it a dump gun or a gel coat gun. Uh, and the ideal thickness is usually between 18 to 24 mils, and one mil equals one thousandth of an, one thousandth of an inch. <clears throat> For my own mold like this, I'm not too concerned about the thickness of the gel coat. Um, I'll just use my best judgment to eyeball it. It's nice. Uh, painting your gel coat on a black surface or a dark surface like this so that you can easily see where the thin spots are. Just about done here. This gel coat does have a strong smell of styrene, so you may want to be in a vented area when you're painting this on or when you're uh, using the, the polyester resin to wet out the fiberglass. Alright, I think that's good for this first coat. I'm going to come back in probably about an hour. Uh, what I want is to be able to touch the gel coat with my finger and feel the stickiness but I don't want to leave anything on my finger like that. Uh, that way I know that it's firm enough so that I'm not going to disturb it with my second coat, but it's still tacky enough to create a chemical bond to the second coat of gel coat. So I'll be with you in a minute with the second coat on. Huh?